Hey, we've been told that to be a revolutionary, we have to go to extremes. We have to go and take up arms in Cuba against the biggest imperialist country in the world. Or we have to chain ourselves to trees or devout our lives to poverty if we want to help the unprivileged. Today, I want to talk to you about the complete opposite of this. I want to talk to you about how we can begin to be revolutionaries today without having to commit to any grand public gestures. Inevitably, there comes a time when you realize some people actually have real problems. Poverty, war, disease, hunger, and not only do they exist, but humans created these problems and humans perpetuate these problems. If you're anything like me, and you believe in truth, beauty, freedom, and above all things, you believe in love, this realization will disturb you, and you'll feel the weight of the world on your shoulders, because you'll also realize that these problems continue to exist because people refuse to do anything about it. So you're faced with making a choice. Are you yourself also going to turn a blind eye, or are you actually gonna rebel and care but before we can change anything in the world we need to transcend this heartbreak i'm beginning to suspect that the biggest threat to the true bohemian revolutionary is our own mind not the government institutions or the rich and powerful our biggest threat may just be depression apathy bitterness disbelief fear and doubt what i want to tell you today is that even though acknowledging these problems will most likely let you feeling powerless. You're actually an all-powerful being, and it's this from which we need to act if we're truly going to change the world. When we see all the big problems that exist in the world, it's pretty easy in comparison to feel small. I mean, it's us against the entire world, but this mentality will actually paralyze you. I mean, how can you change world hunger? I mean, you might as well just go get married, have babies, and shop at IKEA for the rest of your life too. First of all, what we need to realize is that you are a god. You're a wizard, Harry. Just like God created the dinosaurs and the homosexuals. We create shit all day every day. Oatmeal in the morning, YouTube videos whenever we feel ridiculous enough to make them, some of us make clothes, paintings, and not only just art artistic and physical things that we can touch, but we make friendships, we give smiles to people. We create all day every day, it's just a matter of whether you're creating intentionally and you're aware that you are creating every day, or if you do it without realizing what you're doing for yourself. For example, where I work, I have to take the elevator to get to work, and the elevator is actually covered in mirrors. So one or two things happen. Either everybody ignores each other awkwardly and stares at the floor, trying not to make eye contact or staring at their own phone, or somebody goes out of their way to make conversation with you, usually an older person. <laughs> and in that instance, when that older person does make conversation with you, I mean, I realized that I actually step out of the elevator and I feel lighter, I feel happier. Um, I feel something I wasn't feeling before when I was going to go to work without having any interaction with anyone in that confined space. So in that moment, that person in the elevator that spoke to me, they're a god. They're shaping my own existence along with theirs. My day may go like much better now because I'm in a better mood when I step into work. And it's something so small, but if you realize that that is all your life is, just small moments followed by more momentary experiences followed by others, I mean, if we can change one momentary experience, then we can change all of them. Of course, you or I alone cannot change anything, but we can ask ourselves, what can we change? And the answer is that right here, right now, we can change ourselves. If we're to impart any long-lasting or meaningful change on humanity, we need to master the qualities that are necessary to bring to life those changes we want to create. Let me explain what I mean. For example, 
I've always known I wanted to be a writer, and for the longest time I thought I was gonna write the next great American novel. But actually, I realized in college, when I was forced to write fiction, that I actually never wrote fiction before. It was never even a true desire to write fiction. And it wasn't until I just randomly started making videos on YouTube that I realized what I love is non-fiction. I love to talk about things that actually happen, and I love to write about those things about philosophy and um, just revolutionary ideas that I guess can be found in fiction but it's not the way that I want to communicate them and what is not fiction but honesty so if I'm to become a successful writer of non-fiction I have to master honesty I have to master being honest with myself to even know what it is that I want and what I think and what I want to tell other people I have to master honesty in my everyday life if what I create is to be permeated by honesty. And I have to master honesty if anybody else is to believe or even listen or care about anything that I have to say. And honesty is not the only thing I need to cultivate, I'm just picking one thing. But if you look at society, it works the same way for everybody else. If you want to be a leader in anywhere in your life, and being a revolutionary requires that you be a leader because Sadly, not everybody wants to make the world a better place or cares enough to make it happen. Then you need to cultivate whatever qualities are necessary for your revolution to happen. And we all have different things that we want to change. But for example, Mother Teresa would never be the Mother Teresa we know of today if she hadn't mastered compassion and generosity in her lifetime. Che Guevara would have never led other fighters to defeat the United States if he hadn't mastered bravery, courage, and compassion for others during his lifetime. Hell, even Hitler wouldn't be the Hitler we know of if he hadn't mastered evil, cruelty, malevolence, hate, because all the other evil people would never allow him to be a leader if he was not the master of those qualities. And so if we want to be leaders in any ways, we need to master the qualities necessary to be the leaders of the people we want to lead and to create the changes that we want to change or that we want to create. <laughs> and of course, I hope that you choose to cultivate positive and excellent qualities. If you fail to cultivate excellence, what you're going to cultivate in your life is mediocrity. And I don't think anybody that watches this channel with intention, meaning you didn't just stumble upon this video but that you actually choose to watch my videos i think i would guess and i would hope that you're a person that wants to better themselves and better the world so mediocrity is not gonna better the world only excellence can take us further than where we are at now now if you're somebody like me that you're not yet at a place where you can give like a lot of money to charity all the time I think you can begin to create your own revolution, like I said, by transforming yourself and by being a generous god. And I want to clarify, even though the title of this video is inspired by that meme with that Egyptian looking guy saying, I'm a generous god, I actually made it in a positive and sincere and genuine way. Just the other day my cousin was letting me know it's actually kind of a douchey guy from 300, but by then the idea was too too strong in my head to let it go <laughs> so i just hope you know that i mean it in a positive way we need to be generous gods if we're to create any change in the world and a generous god is somebody that creates for the benefit of others along with themselves for example if you want to be a singer you can want to be a singer with the intention of proving other people that they were wrong in telling you that you didn't know what you were doing and that you didn't deserve to be a singer or you can want to be a singer with the intention of wanting to entertain and uplift other people and even though they both have the same desire they come from totally different places one comes from hatred or maybe not hatred but you know like spite and the other person's coming from love and i mean you choose which way you create in every area of your life are you making friendships with the intention of being manipulative and just using people for your own benefit and then discarding them like a used napkin once you're done with them or do you want to create genuine friendships 
in which both people benefit from knowing each other and having a genuine connection. I mean, I don't know about you, but if I am a god and all that I touch and all that I see is all my life is ever gonna be, then I wanna create positivity and I wanna create with love and I wanna give that to other people because that inevitably will come back to me. And you know, the world tells you that the less fortunate need money, but money's not the only way of giving. Two years ago, I went to Boston and my university sent me there so they were paying for everything. I was there for like four, at the most five days and I remember feeling really isolated because every time I would walk down the street, no one would pay any attention to me, no one would look at me, no one would acknowledge me. Even when I went to the bars, like no one would talk to me, no one, no one cared and I mean if you're from Boston you can probably back me up with this one, no one gives a shit. <laughs> and anyway, so on one of my very last days in Boston, um, I walked out of a restaurant, I just had breakfast, and this homeless person asked me if I can give him any change, and I just, I just felt so guilty in that moment because I just come out of a restaurant, so clearly, you know, in his mind, I have money, but I didn't have any change, and for whatever reason, I didn't even have any leftovers or anything, so I just felt really sad, and I... And I told him, I'm sorry, I don't have any change. And I remember immediately that guy just, without missing a beat, all he said was, thank you for acknowledging me. And that's actually one been one of the most meaningful experiences in my life because in that moment I realized money's not everything that people need. And you actually never know what someone needs. I was feeling really guilty that I didn't have money to give to this person. But this person was so appreciative that I gave them human interaction because I can only imagine that if I have been feeling isolated and ignored how is a homeless person living there, their, living their everyday life there how are they feeling extremely isolated, isolated by all the humans that are around them and I tell you this story not just so that oh you can think that oh because you're kind to the homeless you not, you don't have to give anything or, or help change their life in any way that's not what I mean what I mean is that if you don't have the means to give money or clothes or whatever, shelter, you can begin to change people's lives with your own interactions in your daily life. Just like those people changed my life in the elevator. And just like I changed that moment in that person's life by having a human interaction, you can do this in your everyday life. You can act from love in your everyday life. And if we have established that the true revolutionary is guided by strong feelings of love as you begin to strengthen and develop those qualities that will help you lead your own revolution you will inevitably treat the world with love and bring more love to the world so just because you can give in the way that you want to give ultimately you can start today in whatever small way you can even if that just means being kind with your interactions with others and the reason i make this video is because when i started examining the world you know wars and party and everything i just felt so depressed and bitter that my whole goddamn world had been a, a goddamn lie and i was actually really depressed for like months if not a year or more um but actually being depressed will keep you from creating any kind of change I mean, it's not a coincidence that everything we are sold in society is based on fear because fear keeps you powerless, it keeps you weak but can you imagine if we all become brave and in whatever small way we can we try to change the world in our own unique ways imagine tens, hundreds, thousands, millions of us hacking at the oppressive structures that exist that from every coming from every angle in all kinds of small and big ways in my humble opinion that would truly be project mayhem <laughs> anyway thank you for watching this video if you still are please subscribe if you would like to continue talking about world domination and that way you'll be told when a new video comes out which will only come out the next time i have only something worthy enough of your time to watch so i don't make videos every week the next video will probably come out in like a month or two from now i hope that's fine with you 
And uh, if you haven't seen my masterpiece, Honey Dick the Capitalist, go ahead and give it a shot. If you or somebody that you know is thinking about joining Teach for America, then please, for the love of God, watch my other video. Don't join Teach for America. <laughs> if you are not thinking anything about Teach for America, I wouldn't recommend that you watch it because you'll be bored. Because um, I just whined for a really long time about Teach for America. <laughs> Anyway, I'll see you next time. Let me know what you think of this video in the comments. Um, and please know that I want this channel to be a discussion. I don't, I'm not a dictator. I just I want to see what kind of ideas my ideas inspire in you. And when we all put all of our ideas together, we could come up with even better solutions. So feel free to let me know anything that you thought while making this video. Or, or while, while watching this video. <laughs> Bye.